Hi everyone! In this video, we'll be talking about Western blotting and its implication on mad cow disease. Let's recap what Western blotting is. Western blotting is a lab technique used for finding specific proteins in a given sample such as blood or tissue. To do this, first a sample is prepared that contains proteins of interest. Next, gel electrophoresis is used, which is a technique using charge to separate the proteins. It is separated according to its weight, measured in KDA unit. When voltage is applied, smaller proteins move up faster in the SDS page, which is the gel being used. Next, the proteins from the gel are transferred to solid membrane and antibodies are added to make proteins of interest detectable. Antibodies basically bind to the target protein, and the choice of antibody depends on the type of antigen needed to be detected. After that, blocking is done, which is to prevent antibodies from binding to the protein that's not of interest. Lastly, proteins are detected and visualized with a secondary colored antibody. Western blotting is usually used prominently in medical diagnostics, lab work, and protein analysis. Western blotting is utilized for a wide range of confirmatory medical diagnosis of infectious diseases such as Lyme disease, HIV infection, hepatitis C infection, myositis, and autoimmune disorders. But for this video, we'll be focusing on Western blotting and bovine spongiform encephalopathy specifically. Mad cow disease. What is it? Why should I care? Let's start with a story, Jimmy's story. Once upon a time on Hamilton Farm, the cattle farmer was getting ready to feed his cattle, but the farmer decided to purchase some cheaper feed from an unauthorized farmer. Little did our farmer know that this feed has been contaminated. Let's zoom in and see. Contaminated feed is caused by an ingredient which is often used in livestock feed. The ground up powder is made from the parts of cattle that is often not consumed. What makes the feed contaminated is that the powder was made from a cow that was sick with BSE. The contaminated feed contains an abnormal prion component. As the farmer feeds his cattle with this feed, his own cows will now develop BSE as well due to the abnormal prion component. Depending on a cow's age, it may not show any symptoms of having BSE, which can mean a cow can still be processed into various meat products without any knowledge. In this story, the farmer processes the meat and the meat products travel all the way to a local supermarket, where an unsuspecting Jimmy is browsing for burger patties. Jimmy buys the contaminated burgers and decides to have a barbecue where he invites all his friends. Later on, Jimmy begins to feel unlike himself. He starts to develop various symptoms that are associated with the variant of BSE that humans can contract called variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, which is a degenerative brain disorder. This variant caused by the consumption of a cow with BSE is a form of spongiform encephalopathies, which causes holes to develop in the sponge of the brain that are known to cause sudden cognitive impairments and neuromuscular symptoms. Bovine spongiform encephalopathies, BSE, also known as mad cow disease, is a fatal neurodegenerative disease that affects both humans and cows. In 1986, mad cow disease was first discovered in the United Kingdom. From 1986 to 2001, approximately 180,000 cows were affected by this outbreak, leaving many farming communities in dire positions. The root transmission of mad cow disease to humans occurs through dietary consumptions of BSE infected beef. These processed meat products, including sausage, ground meat, and meat pies, which likely contain high concentrations of BSE agent. This disease is transmitted to humans through an infectious agent known as prion. The infection leads to the accumulation of prion proteins in the brain of the host causing abnormally folded forms of proteins. This causes fatal brain disease in humans called variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Some of the symptoms of mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease in humans include personality changes, memory loss, difficulty swallowing and speaking, fatal disorder within one year. In our story later on, Jimmy experiences some of these symptoms. Not all symptoms are experienced by each individual and are not the only indication of the disease. If you suspect you are experiencing these symptoms, please contact your healthcare provider for a professional diagnosis. Currently, there is a knowledge gap and lack of interventions on treating this disease. There are no effective vaccines, clinical trials to show effectiveness, and valid laboratory tests for detecting the virus, pre-symptomatic. Although there has been a limited number of clinical trials and successful laboratory testing, Western blotting has been used to understand the various variants and diagnosis of mad cow disease. 
The Western blot is a powerful technique because even when the presented data doesn't add up, we are able to use the results to figure out why this might be the case. A single band or multiple bands could possess a different molecular weight than anticipated. If it's smaller, we can infer that the protein has denatured or been cleaved, whereas if the band is larger, glycosylation or multimer formation may have taken place. Now let's take a look at some pros and cons of using Western blot. One of the pros of using the Western blot is that it's sensitive. This technique is able to detect samples as small as 0.1 nanograms of protein. This in theory makes it a fairly effective tool in diagnostics. Because it's more sensitive, not as many antibodies would be required for testing. This in turn results in the laboratory cost being reduced. Another pro of using this technique is that it's specific. Using gel electrophoresis, the proteins are separated in terms of size, conformation, and charge. This allows us to gather information about the size of the polypeptide or protein. Specific antibodies will favor specific proteins, meaning target proteins can be detected in large mixtures. Moving on to the cons of the Western blotting technique, it is possible to obtain a false positive result. This technique is still subject to error. A false positive result can be produced when a reaction takes place with an antibody and a non-intended protein. We can also obtain false negative results with this technique. This would take place when a large protein hasn't been given enough time to transfer to the membrane. This would create multiple bands, making results easier to misinterpret. Acquiring tagged antibodies, lab analysis, technicians, and lab equipment, all things necessary to carry out this procedure, can become costly. In addition to that, this process is rather fragile and requires a lot of precision. Small mistakes have the ability to ruin the whole process. There are also some limitations and future steps. Although Western blotting is an amazing diagnostic tool, it's limited because it can only be carried out if there is an antibody available for the protein of interest. Western blotting is also not a cheap process, hence it needs a lot of financial investment. In the future, Western blotting aims to provide digital images and a broader range of antibodies for other proteins of interest. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully you learned a lot.